how's it everyone this is loca hole and in today's video i'm going to be sharing my ice trap occultus league starter for crucible league this is a very well-rounded build it's got good clear excellent single target and it's got the potential to scale well into the end game if you're the kind of person who only likes playing one build a league and just constantly making it better and better and better this build is excellent for that I tested this build in SSF last league and it cleared all the content in the game on self-found gear. It did all the pinnacle bosses, it cleared the assless, it did maven deathless. So this is absolutely a great league slot and it's going to be mine for 3.12. So this build guide includes a detailed part of the building, tons of notes, a leveling spreadsheet and all the information that's in this video you can find linked in the description in written form. So the first question I'm sure you're asking is, why am I playing this on an occultist and not a saboteur? So the saboteur, it does have a lot of quality of life features, things like trap throwing speed and recovery, but the damage is not even close to that of the occultist. Also, this version of the build is much more flexible. If you want it to be more of a mapper or more of a boss or more of an invitation farmer, you can swap a couple of pieces of gear around and a few points on the tree also you can make use of profane bloom with this that's a thing that causes little explodies which normally doesn't work with traps but by using a little trick which i'll explain later on you can use profane bloom this improves the clear massively so you can make this into actually a really good mapper let's go over some of the skills for this build ice trap this is going to be our primary damage dealing skill you throw it under enemies the trap triggers and explodes and kills them. For bosses, what we can do is kind of front load the damage. So we can throw up to 24 or even more traps under the boss while it's busy spawning. Then the moment it spawns, it just takes a massive ton of damage. So this is why trappers are often really good for bossing. It's because they can just get a ton of damage waiting for bosses. And the second it spawns, it explodes, boss dies. As for the hexes... The way that we are applying our hexes is going to be with Arcanist brand. So this build can use up to three curses. In the just general mapping, bossing, balance version, we're only using two curses. For the dedicated boss version, we're using three. So with the bossing version, we link three hexes, Frostbite, Elemental Weakness, and Assassin's Mark with Arcanist brand. You put this Arcanist brand on the ground, and then when it attaches to the boss, it applies all three curses instantly without reducing any of the curse effect. For mapping, instead of using three curses, we just use two. We're using Frostbite and Elemental Weakness linked with Arcanist Brand. But instead of that third curse, we're using Hexbloom. Hexbloom allows our curses to spread throughout packs of monsters. So we don't have to constantly cast curses on new packs. As monsters die, the curse gets spread to the next monster, so that's why we only use two for mapping. We don't actually need three for that kind of damage. For movement skills, shield charge is going to be our primary skill. This just has the fastest movement speed. This build doesn't have a ton of movement speed, so having a fast movement speed skill like shield charge is great. As a secondary movement skill, we're going to be using flame dash or frost blink, depending what you want. This lets us go up and down terrain. It also lets us dodge instantly so having this as a backup is great as for debuffs we have bear trap bear trap this applies a debuff that causes the enemy to take 25 percent increase of damage it also slows them down and if we link this with culling strike support we can instantly finish off bosses when they reach that last 10 percent of their life let's go over some of the auras so this build uses the usual grace determination defiance banner for increased arm and innovation if you don't care about dying, you can slap in Zealotry instead of just Termination. Then we're going to be using Summon Skitterbots. This grants us more trap damage. It also shocks and chills enemies near it. Then an aura that we may have to drop is Vitality. There's been a lot of mana reservation nerfs on the tree with regards to the masteries. So Vitality does help a little bit with some of the recovery issues that this build faces. But... If you're not able to fit in all your auras, just drop Vitality and once you have maybe an Enlightened level 3 or even 4, then you can slot this in, but it's not critical at this point. Now another very important aura. 
If you haven't played with Divine Blessing before, Divine Blessing allows us to cast an aura as a temporary buff. This build reserves almost all of our mana and Divine Blessing causes this aura to cost mana in order to cast it. This build, however, uses Eldritch Battery, which allows us to use our energy shield to cast spells instead of mana. So we're using a Hatred Divine Blessing aura. So this is not a permanent uptime aura, but you push that button and you have Hatred active on your character. So we use this for bossing. If you get to the end of a map boss, there's a map boss, you push this button, tons more damage. Same with bossing. We can also link this with Inspiration Support, which reduces the energy shield cost. And as for some extra utility, we can use Molten Shell or Steel Skin on left click. Molten Shell was nerfed pretty hard this league. Also, this build doesn't scale tons of armor beyond Determination and a Granite Flask and whatever armor you might have on your gear. So I'm thinking Steel Skin on left click might actually be better this league. It also provides bleed immunity while it's active, so Steel Skin probably the better option this league. But if you feel like you're scaling tons of armor, try out Molten Shell. Could be pretty good. Let's go over some of the primary uniques that this build uses. First up, probably the most important unique is Heat Shiver. This is a super cheap helmet, super common, usually only an Ulk, but with its increased popularity, it might be a couple of chaos, but because it's so popular, you might even find one during the campaign. This adds an absurd amount of damage. This is kind of best in slot when it comes to damage. It's about 60% more damage from this one helmet. So you're gonna to wanna to grab yourself a heat shiver as soon as possible. If you can get one with a plus one power charge corruption, that's even better. Let's look at the gloves. We have Slave Driver's Hands and Architect's Hands. These allow us to scale our trap throwing speed based on our cast speed. So without these, you can feel like your trap throwing speed is a little bit sluggish, but because this build does scale some Frenzy Charges, Frenzy Charges grant us cast speed, and then this converts into trap throwing speed. So Architect's Hands and Slave Driver's Hand both have this modifier that we're looking for. However, Slave Driver's Hand does mean that our traps cost life to cast. So because I'll go into later, this build does have some issues with recovery. I prefer using Architect's Hand, so you can use these. However, overall, I didn't even play with these on a lot of versions of the build, and I didn't feel like I needed them. So if you prefer just using gloves with resistances, spell suppression, dexterity or strength or something, that's absolutely fine too. As for our wand, Void Battery. This is usually fairly cheap depending on its popularity. Grants us more power charges and tons more damage per power charge and increased crit chance. So this wand is a no-brainer. However, if you can find a nicely rolled plus one cold skills or plus one all plus one all cold skills wand with crit chance, crit multi, spell damage, non-chaos is extra, you can actually produce similar damage. So if you can't get a void battery early on, just try and get a plus one all cold skills wand, craft on some crit or spell damage and it should be fine. That's what I use, was using in SSF, killed Maven very comfortably. Body armor, tinker skin. This does solve some of our recovery issues because we're gaining some life and energy shield per trap triggered. Also grants us phasing. However, we are getting phasing from one of the new spell suppression masteries. It has decent ES and evasion. So if you can grab yourself a tink skin early on, it's going to be a great choice. Now, a pair of boots that is very important. Ralakesh's Impatience. These boots will instantly set you to max charges while stationary. So the way this build generates charges is we have a percent chance to get a frenzy charge or a power charge when our traps are detonated. However, with Rallakesh and Impatience, we just get max charges. This is very, very, very useful for boss fights because we enter the boss fight at max charges. A lot of our damage is coming from charges, so you don't have to ramp up. You also don't have to ramp up between phases. These have become quite popular. They normally cost the Divine. They might be a bit more early on in League, but if you can grab a pair of these, what you do is you just pop them on your feet at the start of a boss fight and then throw out your traps and you'll be instantly at max damage. 
One tip, try not to place your auras in your boots if you do use these because when you swap Rallakesh's Impatience on with your other boots and then put your normal boots back on, you're going to have to turn your auras back on. So try keep your auras out of your boots. Next up, we have Grave Bind. So I was talking about Profane Bloom. How do you get Profane Bloom to work? Traps do not count as you. This is a mechanic that's a bit hard to explain, but there are a lot of effects in the game, such as when you kill an enemy, they have a chance to explode. Traps do not count as you. So Profane Bloom will not work with traps. However, Gravevine lets us get around this. It has the line, nearby enemies killed by anyone counts as being killed by you instead. So with these, we can use Profane Bloom. We can get Herald of Ash explosions. So if you want to do more of a mapping version, these are a great option. This also lets us make use of a life gain on Hit Vitality Watcher's Eye to further help some of our recovery issues. And with these, we can maybe use a Profane Proxy Ring with a curse to auto-curse enemies to help them explode more easily. Or you can just keep using that Hex Bloom tech that I talked about a bit earlier. There's another reason why I might actually be using these next league over Slave Driver's Hand. There's an elemental mastery that grants us a 25% chance to invert a monster's resistances. If this doesn't make sense, what this means is, for example, if we have a pinnacle boss like Maven who has 50 cold resistance, we have a 25% chance to deal damage as though that boss had negative 50 resistance. That's the way I've interpreted that mastery. That translates into 100 elemental penetration for bossing, which is super good. So this might be powerful enough that I end up just using Gravebind the whole league. I'll test it next league. We'll see. That mastery might work even without Gravebind, but we'll see. If it does, that's absolutely a mastery worth picking up. Another great option for amulets is going to be Badge of the Brotherhood. This grants us as many Frenzy Charges as we have Power Charges. This build uses between 7 and 10, possibly even more Power Charges. So if we can get as many Frenzy Charges, that's a ton more damage, it's a ton more car speed, which if you're using Architect Hand, that translates into Trap Throwing Speed. The only reason that you might not want to use this amulet is that this build is quite attribute and resistance starved. You might not actually be able to fit this in the build because you're going to need so much strength and dexterity. So if you can't, try get an amulet with strength, dexterity, maybe plus one all cold skill gems, and that's fine. But if you can fit in Badge of the Brotherhood, great option. Also, very obvious option, Ashes of the Stars, but it's very expensive. This build does have more uniques, but check out the notes section in POB. One more that I just want to touch on is the Ghastly Theater Shield. This is a really, really nice shield early on. It's one a lot of people overlook, but it improves our physical defenses hugely. If you feel like you're dying a lot and you're getting killed by auto attacks, and physical hits, you can grab one of these for just an ulk or two and it should help your survivability early on while you're working out ways to improve your defenses in other ways. As for the rest of our gear, on our armor and jewelry, we're looking for strength and dexterity and resistances, life, spell suppression, little bit of energy shield, just so that we have some to cast our divine blessing. Also stats like crit, crit chance, plus level of skills, those are all great for our build. On our shield, we're mainly looking for life, critical strike chance for spells, resistances, also maximum all resistances. These are great. Also try to make sure you're using an energy shield or energy shield evasion hybrid base because we are gonna need some of that energy shield for Eldritch battery. As for our belt, same thing, life, resistances. You can also get trap throwing speed from an essence of zeal. But one very important mod that we want on our belt is a Benchcraft. Regenerate 150 energy shield per second while a rare or unique enemy is nearby. This is going to help our ES regeneration massively during boss fights. Let's have a quick look at the skill tree. So this build, it does have leveling for the different points of the campaign all the way up to level 85. And then it has a budget version and more of a balanced version, more of a bossing version, 
and then we have the explode version which is semi-experimental this is the one that uses profane bloom with grave binds however the one i would recommend is just balance this is fairly straightforward we're grabbing some life and some power charge stuff we're also grabbing this new reservation mastery this is important bit of cold damage eldritch battery over here reservation some spell suppression this is one of the new spell suppression masteries that's going to be great for this build inflict fire cold and lightning exposure on enemies when you suppress their spell damage this build should be spell suppression capped i know it shows 98 percent there but with this new mastery 15 percent chance to suppress spell damage if equipped helmet body armor gloves and boots all have evasion rating which they should we should be well over spell suppression cap. You may even be able to drop one of these. We also have this one. Phasing while you have suppressed spell damage recently. This grants us phasing fairly easily. However, you don't necessarily need to take this because we can get phasing from our Tinker skin. The rest of the tree is more crit, more trap stuff, some power charges, some frenzy charges, life, reservation. You can have a look at it yourself. Previously, we did go all the way down here to Herbalism. You can still grab that if you get to a very high level on this character. However, we lost the one with nothing passive. This previously, I took this because it was a lot of Chaos Resistance, but now it is gone. So instead, I've opted to path this way to get Asylum. Here is some Chaos Resistance, and if you get a few more levels, you can grab Quick Recovery for a little bit more life over here. If you get all the way to level 100, you can grab another basic jewel socket over here. One important mastery to point out is this charge mastery. If you're just doing general mapping, you can get 3% increased damage per endurance, frenzy, or power charge. This is great, a lot of increased damage. However, if you're doing bosses, you do want to swap it over to this 100% increased charge duration. A lot of boss fights have extended phases where you cannot target the boss which means you cannot refresh your charges. However, with this, you get over 20 seconds of charge duration, so that should keep your charges up during boss fights. Another thing, in the bossing version, we are taking Whispers of Doom. This is a third curse. However, in the mapping version, like I said, we're only using two curses, so you don't need to worry about that. In the Explode version, however, these are our usual Ascendancy nodes that we take but on the explode version we're going to drop this additional curse and instead grab profane bloom only do this if you're using the grave bind gloves but otherwise you're going to be taking just the usual this so if you're following this build guide just follow these leveling trees as you can see it shows you which points to take when and then follow it up to the budget version this should be level 95 and then the slightly more balanced version there are also versions with cluster jewels, but I never really felt like I needed them. If you want to go all in, do more damage, have a bit less life, you can throw in cluster jewels, but I never really felt like I needed it. Also, while we're in the POB, just take note of the notes section. There are tons of notes describing lots of things to do with the build. It also has some tips for getting through the campaign. The skills section has leveling gems, so you know which gems to take. There's also a spreadsheet which shows you where you're going to acquire these gems. Something important, try level up a few ice traps or these gems in your offhand. Once you reach level 20 ice trap, just corrupt it. Try and get a level 21 ice trap. We don't need to worry too much about the quality yet. Just getting that plus one ice trap level is very important. And then we also have slightly different gems for the different versions. But like I said, just try stick with the balanced version. Same thing with items, we have budget gear, balance, bossing, and then the mapping explode version. Let's go over some of the very basics of the playstyle. So this is a trapper build, which is a playstyle that some people love, some people absolutely hate. There's a slight delay between throwing your traps and having it trigger and deal damage. So you don't want to be on top of monsters. You want to throw your trap, wait for it to explode and move. This does have a decent area of effect, so you can throw it under a big pack of monsters and explode and move on. Just try not to run too far ahead into a pack of monsters, get killed before your trap explodes. So for mapping, you can cast an Arcanist brand on a pack of mobs. This is going to apply your curse, and then the Hex Bloom will allow the curse to propagate throughout the pack. 
This might not even be necessary for general mapping. Damage on ice traps really good, so you probably don't even need that additional damage from the curses. But once you get to a map boss, you can apply the curse, you can push your divine blessing button to get more damage from your hatred aura. Something important to note though, try to turn on your flasks and divine blessing aura after you have thrown your traps before they trigger. For some reason, I was informed that traps snapshot, which meant that you would use your auras and your flasks and everything and then throw your traps. But in fact, that's not the case. You want to throw your traps then just before they explode, turn on your Divine Blessing and Flasks and everything. Let's just go over some of the defensive and damage scaling parts of the build. So for a softcore witch, this is actually a decently tanky build. If you want to play it in hardcore, you probably could, but you would need to drop a fair amount of damage, focus on more defenses and solve some recovery issues. So for mitigation, we're fully spell suppression capped. We have Determination, Grace, Defiance Banner and Steel Skin. Also, we're using Lethe Shade for some more mitigation from dot effects. As for Avoidance, we have decent evade chance on this build. A lot of our gear has some evasion. We do pick up a couple of evasion nodes along the way. We should have about 5,000 life. Between 4,500, 5,000. You can get a bit more if you want to drop some damage. We are Freeze and Chill immune. We can get fully ailment immune if we get Storm Shroud and some shock avoidance on our boots. And as for recovery, this is the weak part of the build. We can use Tinker Skin. There is also a mastery that grants us some life when a trap is triggered. We can also use Vitality, but yeah, this is by far the weakest defensive layer of the build. It's not terrible. This is not as good as Saboteur that has very good recovery when it comes to traps. As for damage scaling, Power Charges, Frenzy Charges, these all give us lots of damage. Crit chance and crit multi, these are great. This build does get a lot of damage from its crit multi, so this is important. Also, percent increased cold damage and spell damage, elemental penetration, plus level of all skill gems or cold skill gems. Those are great to make your damage number go up. Just a couple of things. In the different versions of the builds, we have the balanced version, bossing, and mapping explode version. If you're just playing the game, again, don't worry, you don't need to constantly swap out gear. You can just stick to the balance or the budget version of the build and you'll do all the content fine. However, if you do want to do some dedicated bossing or mapping, you can make the following changes. In the part of the building, just be sure to change the skills, the tree, and the item section to the appropriate version of the build. So for bossing, we can drop Determination and use Zealotry instead. We can use Atziri's Promise Flask instead of a Granite Flask. And then we're going to allocate Whispers of Doom for that third curse and add in Assassin's Mark instead of Hexbloom. And then also important is to allocate that Charge Mastery, 100% increased charge duration. Very important. As for the Explode version like we went over, you're going to unallocate Unholy Authority allocate profane bloom we're only going to use one curse because we are only going to have max one curse and then we can use the profane proxy for an auto curse or we can keep using the arcanist brand with hex bloom and our curse linked with faster casting this is very fun i haven't tested it extensively but use it at your own risk it's worth trying out getting explosions always feels good last thing pros and cons so what are some of the pros of this build? It's a great all-rounder. It's got good single target. It has decent clear. It's very low budget. I did the whole Atlas without even having void battery and just very, very basic self-found gear. I managed to do Maven Deathless and complete 115 out of 115 maps. It's a very malleable class. You can form it, shape it into however you want, and it can scale into some very, very crazy levels that insta-phase even uber bosses and invitations. And by the end of it, instead of having a leveled saboteur, you have a leveled witch. So if you want to re-roll into a better build, you have more options. Having a leveled witch is always great. You just change some points around and then you can play whatever, cast some crit. I don't know what builds there are, but there's lots, which is good. Also the leveling, super smooth, super comfy, great. As for the cons, the main one is the trap play style. This is going to be something you have to get used to. If you have played traps before, you're going to be fine. You're not going to worry about it. If you haven't played traps before, you might not like the play style, but it's something I enjoy. 
Another thing is the recovery is quite poor. There are some ways around this, but it's not going to feel as good as a Saboteur. Also, this build is very suffix starved. It's a build that struggles to get up to the required dexterity and strength and resistances. You can't, you will make it work. I did make it work in SSF, but you are going to feel like you have to shuffle some gear around here and there and make some decisions. You might even want to take a Lyra as a banner choice instead of the two passives, just to free up some pressure on your suffixes so you don't have to use as many of those for resistances. Last couple of things, can it do Ubers? Yeah, with appropriate scaling of the build. And if you as a player are physically capable of doing it, if you've practiced the fights, you know the fights, and you put in the time and effort and get good gear, then yes, you can do Ubers on this build, but that's not really the goal of this. As for some of the changes in 3.21, the main ones are gonna be the reservation efficiency. We have to grab the two mana points at Deep Thoughts to get the 12% increased mana reservation efficiency. And then we need to either not use Vitality or just not level up the level too high. Until you get an Enlight level 3, you might not even be able to fit in Vitality, but getting an early Tinker Skin will help solve some of these recovery issues. As for Spell Suppression Mastery, there are some great new ones. However, we are going to lose 100% global critical strike chance because of the loss of that Mastery. However, Power Charges got slightly buffed. They now grant 10% increased crit chance, so it's now 50% increased crit chance per power charge. Like I said, we're using up to 10, possibly even more. On the budget version, it's 7, so we're recovering a lot of that critical strike chance there. But that is going to be it for this video. Remember, there is the POB linked in the description. If you don't have the 3.21 version, I will also link that version in the description so that you can view this tree. There's also the detailed leveling spreadsheet and notes section. I'm also going to link the script for this video that I'm reading right now in the description. So if you prefer reading, you can just read through all of this. But let me know what you think. Are you going to give this a try? What's your league saga going to be? If you are going to do this, be sure to pop into my Discord. If you have any questions about the build, then be sure to shout. But all the information should be here for you. So have a wonderful day, everyone. Catch you in 3.21. Stay safe and have a wonderful day.